What is up everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. We're also going to be doing a trading update talking about what I personally did today in the stock market as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be talking about Tesla stock and whether or not I think it has the ability to get to 3 $360 per share and it's currently sitting at 350 and if you guys watch my video a couple of weeks ago titled Tesla stock to 350 as you can see we clearly hit 350 and now the next level is 360 and again I want to break down the stock and talk to you guys about how I think it can really hit 360 here in the next couple of days but before we do talk about that if you guys enjoy this video all I ask from you is to simply hit that like button make that button button blue and consider subscribing to the channel if you do want to see further content from me about the stock market investing and trading and join our strive smart discord group chat as well as our strive smart facebook group all of those are free as well as the strive smart merch is down below if you guys want to check that out as well so let's get right into it starting off with the spx here the s p 500 which hit yet again guys an all-time high today at the end of the market of 31.20 Point four six ended up closing the day up twenty three dollars and eighty three cents up almost point eight percent point seven seven percent to be exact. This is a ridiculous day, um, you know, for the S and P five hundred, and this is mostly, in my opinion, um, due to optimism surrounding the trade war. The China, uh, you know, China and the U S. They've been in discussions over these past couple of days. Yesterday, and I believe today, um, they were talking. And we got some optimism from Larry Kudlow. That's kind of what pushed this market up, um, you know, in my personal opinion. And you can see, again, the close of the market is where we actually hit that all-time high. And the whole performance today of the market was extremely bullish, right? We gapped up. We didn't really pull down at all for the whole entire day, maybe a little bit in, in, the, in uh, you know, the middle of the day. But ultimately, we ended up, again, hitting that higher high and hitting that all-time high. So very bullish um, in terms of the S&P today and its performance and especially that close and if we go to that hour chart again we can see again the all-time high the uptrend continuing here and the beautiful pop on that 50 SMA um, from yesterday that we really saw play out um, you know heading into today right we broke all of the old resistances so at this point I'm looking to see if the S&P is going to either continue this you know higher high pattern where we hit another all-time high maybe on Monday or you you know, if we do pull down, I wouldn't be surprised, guys, because the RSI is overbought now. It's at 73 here on the hourly chart. So if we were to pull down, where do I see the S&P, you know, finding support again? Well, it's either going to be around 3,100, this old resistance. We might hold that as a new support, maybe 3,105, right? That's kind of where we opened up this morning. Or if we see a further sell-off, um, you know, maybe back down to about 3,095, where we would test that 50 SMA on this hourly chart. So that's kind of the breakdown. Nothing much to, um, you know, really talk about, you know, optimism surrounding the trade war um, that obviously pushed us to this all time high. And at this point, is the rally going to continue? Or are we going to see a pullback? I personally think, again, at least in the short term, um, you know, we're going to continue seeing this market exploding. Whether or not we pull down, um, it probably will happen. Either you know, next week we might see a bit of a sell-off before continuing. But ultimately, I think the trajectory in this market is still up, right? So if we go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average today, guys, very explosive day, up 220 points, up 0.8 percent on the dot, and the Dow. Jones Jones guys finally cracked into the $28,000 territory. Today was a historical moment um, for the Dow Jones, right? And if we go to the one day, one minute, beautiful uptrend for the entire day. Um, it really didn't cool off at all, except for this um, little hour, hour and a half in the middle of the day. But ultimately, just like the S&P, we hit that higher high bullish close in the hour, um, you know, leading to the end of the market. So very beautiful day um, for the Dow Jones on the 20 
20 day, one hour chart. And you can see, you know, we popped perfectly on that 50 SMA from yesterday's close. Now, if we see a pull down, you know, if we see this thing cool off a bit, where could it go? Um, you know, maybe 27,800 bucks. That's an old all time high. We probably will hold that, you know, as a new support. Maybe we run up again on Monday, Tuesday, who knows? Then maybe we pull down from there, hold 28,000 as a new support. You know, these are some levels that we kind of have to wait, or rather some scenarios that can happen, but we really have to wait um, till Monday, at least till Sunday night when the futures market open to see, you know, which one will play out, right? Because if we wait till Sunday, you know, we see these futures are gapping up, let's say half a percent. Obviously, if that carries into Monday, you know, the markets will be much higher. Then if we pull down a 28K, that would make sense as a pullback. But let's say the futures are gapping down red on Sunday that leads into Monday. You know, that could indicate to me, you out there, you know, doing technical analysis that we might be pulling down, let's say, to 27,800. So really the moral of the story is play it by ear. We'll see what happens Sunday night when the futures market opens and especially heading into Monday. So that's really it for the Dow Jones. Beautiful, beautiful performance today. All-time highs. Um, you know, it's looking very, very bullish, guys, especially at the close. The NASDAQ today up 57 points, um, and it's actually dropping a little bit right now, up about 0.7%, and we hit another all-time high, guys, and we're actually, I think we actually just hit the all-time high because this is the future, uh, the futures that we're looking at right now. Um, the all-time high is 83 323 as you can see um, you know on this chart if we zoom in a bit to that one hour chart um, you can see the beautiful pop on top of that 180 SMA um, to that higher high again which we just hit at this point right now the all-time high at 8030 or 8323 rather so at this point you know if we look at the RSI on the Nasdaq it's not as overbought as the Dow and the SMP right so I can actually see this one maybe running a bit higher before ultimately retracing and maybe testing that 50 SMA, this green line here, or maybe even that 180 SMA, um, which we just bounced on top of and, you know, within the past 42 or rather 24 to 48 hours. So pull down, maybe that's happening, but again, not as overbought. So we may run up a little bit before we ultimately see that pullback. But either way, just like the Dow, you know, just like the S&P, this is very, very bullish, closing on a nice bullish note heading into the weekend. That's as great of a sign as the Bulls can get heading into the weekend, right guys? So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts about the markets? Will we continue running here? Um, will we sell off in the short term? I'd love to know what you guys have to think. So what did I do in the markets today? Well, the truth is guys, I didn't day trade today yet again. I feel like this week was really a swing trading week for me. I didn't do any day trading today because if you've been following the videos, you know that I'm involved with a ton ton of swing trades right now. You know, a lot that I'm actually losing count when I'm when I'm recalling them in my head for this video. But really, I'm just holding on to those swings. I'm up on, a, on I think I'm up on all of them to uh, believe it or not. Uh, maybe Chipotle I'm not on up on, but the ones that I'm swinging just to quickly run through in under a minute, um, I'm swing trading McDonald's and I'm swing trading Chipotle. Both of these restaurant stocks, they've been crushed. Their earnings were pretty decent kind of a mixed bag, um, but we're seeing a slow reversal in both of these stocks. So I put a little bit of money in both, um, you know, as they're trying to continue the trend up, which both of their trends over time are up. And this is just simply a dip. I'm also swing trading Facebook, which I'm, which I'm actually up right now about, about one to 2% on PayPal is another one that did very well today. Um, actually I think it did better yesterday, uh, but the trend continues today, which was really, really good. Actually, yeah, we closed or rather we opened at 104.50, sold off. Uh, but again, yeah, we held that trend for uh, from yesterday, which is a good sign that PayPal is reversing. And I'm really liking this one, guys. I didn't add more money today um, into PayPal, but I did uh, buy more yesterday, as you saw 
in yesterday's video, so I'm holding that one. Let me think, guys. What am I in? PayPal, McDonald's, Chipotle. Um, oh my goodness, guys. I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But I'm definitely in four, five, six swing trades right now. And um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm waiting kind of for you guys to fiddle out before I trade natural gas again. And it seems like finally today we are getting um, some push up as we saw you guys um, see a pretty good day. But we'll get into that here in a couple of minutes. Now I kind of want to talk about Tesla and go over why I think it can get to $360 per share. And again, I made a video, this must have been um, like one, two weeks ago, maybe even three weeks ago, talking about how Tesla had a very good opportunity, especially after their earnings report, to get up to $350 per share, right? And that's exactly what we got. And if you don't remember what happened, well, Tesla saw surprise profit. Their revenue, I believe, missed a little bit, but again, um, that profit shot the stock up after their earnings report a couple of weeks ago. The stock went from 250 all the way up to 330 bucks per share. And at this point, a lot of us were skeptical that you know this thing might pull down and maybe even get back down to the 290s, 280s. But ultimately, it never really did. Right? We cooled off a bit at 300 bucks here, shot up another level to 320 cooled off again, ultimately held um, 311 for a couple of days at a higher low from the previous, which honestly, 311 has been a strong support over the past couple um, of years if we look at this one-year chart. So we held, actually, no, this is down here, guys. So we held this level 310, then ultimately we shot up aggressively, and I think that's when I made the video talking about um, Tesla to 350. Then uh, long story short, we got the 350. We got the 350, I believe believe it was, uh, let's look on the five day, five minute, I believe it was two, three days ago. And now we're starting to see a very similar pattern as to what we saw on the consolidation at that $310 level, right? We're starting to see Tesla level out a bit. Now the question is, are we going to successfully hold 350, which it seems like we're doing? And is, is it honestly going to hold into Monday and Tuesday before we do make that break up to 360. So I kind of want to set on alert here, um, $353 for Tesla. And honestly, guys, the fact that it's already holding it again for the past one, two days in terms of that 350 level, that's a really, really good sign. And if this stock's actually moving up pre-market, um, it could probably hit 360 on Monday with how bullish this has been. So I, again, I set that 353 alert. You know, on Monday, if we do end up breaking out like this, that's going to trigger my alert and I'll probably build a position, uh, maybe even a swing position in Tesla as it tries to fill the gap up from there. But really guys, I think this is going to continue to remain bullish. They actually just announced a um, Gigafactory going in Germany and Berlin, which is really good, right? You know, the, uh, the Chinese Gigafactory in Shanghai, that's probably going to start pumping out vehicles here in the next couple of weeks. So a lot of good news right now um, revolving Tesla. And sooner than later, guys, before we even know it, their next earnings are going to roll up. And if they maybe hit profits yet again, have, a, have an impressive earnings, we get to see some numbers from the Chinese Gigafactory and so forth. I can see Tesla stock, believe it or not, guys, this may blow your minds. You know, I can see Tesla stock um, 380, maybe even breaking to all-time highs, guys, into the 400s over these next couple of of months. I definitely think it's possible. But again, that's if they crush earnings. Um, you know, if they do well, if we get numbers from the gigafactories and so forth, um, I think they can do well overall. But this this upcoming week, again, guys, you know, I think this plateau, not really plateau, but this consolidation we're seeing, it's going to get us to that 360 level. But on the flip side, we have to plan for both scenarios. You know, if it pulls down, if we see a sudden dip uh, below um, 350 bucks, we may be going back down to retest um, 340, maybe even that 180 SMA, which we actually held a couple weeks ago, really about a week ago. And if it holds that, guys, that could be even a better dip buy for Tesla. And I might even load the boat, not load the boat like an insane amount of shares, but I might even build a, a better swing position here than I would here. So either way, it's win-win in my opinion. You know, if we make that push up, 
we could get in as a day trade, maybe a one, two day swing trade. If we get the pull down, you know, more margin of profits opened, especially if we hold that level, we can get in at a, at a cheaper price and swing trade it to 340 again, 350, um, and, and again, even 360. So that's kind of what I'm thinking right now about Tesla. Let's go into you guys, guys, because um, a lot of you, of course, love when I when I cover you guys and go over it. And if you want to see a more in-depth um, report or rather a breakdown of the natural gas report that came out yesterday. I'll have a link down below in the description to yesterday's video where I went in depth with those numbers. But pretty much those numbers um, that the natural gas report um, you know, gave out ended up tanking you guys. If we can see on this five day, five minute, you'll be able to see it. You know, you guys ended up tanking. But ultimately, the you know, if we're looking at a three day basis here, the trend is kind of re reversing to the upside despite that report not being too great for you guys initially right so we got the pull down um yesterday of course and then we ultimately sold off for the rest of the day heading into after hours but now with today's action you can see you know we kind of made higher highs and higher lows on the daily chart here which ultimately based on this trend line you know that's an upwards trajectory that's starting to form and honestly the the, the close today was quite bullish in my opinion, because we held the 180 SMA at a higher low, as well as holding this trend line. So for you guys, would I hold it over the weekend? No way, because this thing can definitely dump, um, you know, based on what the futures look like on Sunday. But if it holds this, guys, on Monday, right, you know, let's say we start to do something like this, you see natural gas start to move up, right? You know, this could definitely be an entry point on Monday, but again, holding it over the weekend, that's a bit too um, risky for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. You know, natural gas, it's been funky. I think we actually rolled over to the, uh, Dece uh, not the December futures, to the, uh, to the January contract, which is this one right here. And if we look at the four hour chart, you know, we're, we're holding the 180 SMA, which is a bit bullish in my opinion, right? But we're struggling under that 50 SMA. So ultimately, if we see something like this next week and a bullish report on Thursday, um, I could see you guys, honestly, guys being uh, 20 plus bucks over the next one to two weeks if this pops and if we get that bullish report. Let's say we start to get withdrawals, right? You know, I think that's going to be fantastic, right? So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Natural gas, you guys, again, if you want to see that report breakdown, go check out yesterday's video. I go into that for about five, six minutes. Um, so go check that out. And rapid fire, guys, before I do end off this video, let's get talking about some other stocks that I'm watching. So we saw PayPal, right? You know, this is one that I'm watching heavily. I added more to that. I'm swing trading it. McDonald's, I'm swing trading this again, like I said earlier in the video. Another hot stock, guys, has been AbbVie. This thing I actually bought it in my M1 Finance account. Believe it or not, I'm up 25% in my M1 Finance account on AbbVie, and I bought this stock like about a month ago. That's that's just that's just insanity, guys. That's just a, a crazy move right there. And you can see it for yourself. It's gone from 62 all the way up to 90 in the matter of three months. That is just crazy. So at this point, you know, maybe a cool off for AbbVie would be good, uh, you know, down to about 84, 85 bucks, maybe a retest on this old resistance as a new support and on that 50 SMA, that could be a good entry point um, for AbbVie, right? Another one, Chipotle, we already talked about that. It seems like it's 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 trying to break out of that 50 SMA. Um, and I think if it does, guys, this thing could definitely fill up to that 180 SMA, which is kind of why, hint, hint, I am swing trading it because I do see it eventually doing that um, over these next couple of days. Now, what other stocks, guys? We talked about pretty much every single one um, that I'm involved with here. You know, if these markets continue to push up, definitely keep an eye on QQQ, which is an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ, right? You know, TQQQ is a leveraged ETF um, that tracks the NASDAQ as well. So if you're bullish right now on tech, you know, NASDAQ in the short term, this is definitely one that you should consider. Um, you know, TQQQ, look deeper into it, guys. Um, it's not as crazy as, you know, these leveraged ETNs. This is leveraged, um, but I feel like it's a bit easier to trade 
than a UGAS or a DGAS or, um, you know, really anything that trades, you know, on, on commodities like that. You know, um, it's, it's kind of difficult sometimes to trade JNUG and JDST. So just keep an eye on this one, right? TQQQ goes up whenever the NASDAQ's going up. SQQQ is the exact opposite, right? It goes up when the NASDAQ is selling off. So if we see a further pull down, this is definitely one um, to keep an eye on. So overall, guys, I'm going to end off the video here. Oh, ATV is another one, guys. ATV. This, this one did very well today, up 1.4%. Definitely one worth watching, um, you know, heading into this week. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content for me. And if you want to be a part of our Discord group chat, that's linked down below. The Facebook's linked down below. And if you want to check out the merch, that's linked down below as well. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I hope you all had a fantastic week and I hope you all have a fantastic fantastic weekend. Let me know in the comments how you did any stocks or ETFs that you want me to talk about in Sunday's video. Again, have a great weekend. Peace out.